What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It is me, Lauren Nicole, and I'm back at it with another lock video. But today I'm actually going to be doing a one year lock tag. I saw the video on um, a channel by a woman who goes by the name of Phenomenal Woman. She did the one year lock tag and I really liked all the questions. And so I figured I should do it myself because I am a year and four months. So I don't know. I just feel like the tag comes at a pretty good time for me and my journey. Um, Make sure to check out her channel if you have not. Like I said, her name is Phenomenal Woman. She also is a lock queen with thick, juicy locks, and her content is really good. I promise you it will not disappoint. So I have the questions all on my phone, and I'm going to get right into it. Question number one is, what is something you've learned about yourself? I learned that I was not nearly as patient as I thought I was, and that I also was still a little bit too concerned with people's opinions of me my hair, my everything just in the beginning of my journey. And so you really become a lot more self-aware when you get on a lock journey, just seeing yourself in your raw, true, authentic form. Like you just can't help but become a little more self-aware. So yeah, I did notice some of my character flaws and one being that, and like I said, patience, because even though I knew that this was gonna be a long journey and it was gonna be several, several months, if not a whole year, and then some until I saw, you know, a look, uh, results that I wanted, but Sometimes you just get impatient and that can be discouraging, which is not good when you're on a lock journey. The last thing you want is to be discouraged because of how long your hair is taking to lock because trust me, it's going to take <laughs> a while to lock. Um, question number two, was the first year as challenging as you thought it would be? Absolutely. Um, it was very, very challenging and just figuring out how to make your hair look the way you want it to look to, you know, say you want to dress up or have an event to go to. It's very challenging just figuring out like how you want to put, put it all together. Um, also, it's very challenging just dealing with negativity, outsiders, um, opinions, comments, things like that. That can be very challenging if you don't if you don't have thick skin. And like I said, in the beginning of my journey, I could have used a little bit thicker of skin. Number three, what stage or month was the hardest and how did I handle it? I would say the hardest stages was probably like months two through almost month 10 because that was when I just had the most budding, the most frizz. Some of my locks were locking from the top to the bottom, some from the bottom to the top, and it was in no particular order, like for no, I don't know why some of them did that, why some, I, I really don't know, but it made my hair just look like I had no sort of, um, I didn't know what the style looked like. It, some had curly ends, some looked like locks, and it was easier in the beginning because when I still had the two strand twist pattern, it was easier to, I guess, camouflage what I was doing with my hair. So I still had the two strand twist and had little curlies on the end. So you could easily, like, if you felt like your hair wouldn't cooperate in that day, it was nothing to just pull it back and, um, you know, nobody would even question you. It would just look like you had your natural hair in a ponytail. But once it got to that point where there was more like budding and stuff happening, that was when it was difficult because then it also still didn't look like I had locks, you know, and people ask you, oh, did, I got so many, did you cut your hair? You cut your hair? Because they just see it getting shorter and shorter and I guess frizzing up more and more. So I got that, I got asked that a lot because yeah, it just still didn't look like locks, but it didn't look like I had loose natural hair either. So yeah, I guess to, um, how did I handle it? I just had to, had to take it. You know, some days I wore a scarf. If your hair doesn't look the way you want it to look that day, don't hesitate to put a scarf. I tell people that off the top, if you about to lock your hair and you're not one of those people who could just walk out with your hair looking nowhere near what you wanted to invest in some scarves because they're cute and nobody has to know. Nobody's going to question you. Nobody's going to know nothing. So Yes. <clears throat> Number four, what's one thing you wish you knew before starting locks? I feel like I did so much research into locks. I knew I'd wanted them for almost like a year before I got them, probably even more than that. I just knew eventually at some point in my life I was going to lock my hair. So I had already been educating myself and watching videos on lock maintenance, lock tips, lock everything. And I felt like I pretty much covered it all down. So I don't think that there was anything that I wish I would have known before I started my lock journey. Um, number five, what's one thing you miss about loose natural hair? 
probably just the look of it. I miss having big hair sometimes. Um, even though as my hair is getting longer and thicker, I will be getting back to those days soon enough. But I do miss just rocking a big fro. So if anything, yeah, it's just the physical look of having big hair or wearing it, you know, stretched out. I, I do like the physical look of that. Number six, what's one thing you're glad you don't have to deal with not having loose natural hair? Um, I don't think y'all want me to list everything because I'll be on this video for way too long. <laughs> I, I really, I don't, there is nothing that I miss about it other than the look. I don't miss detangling. I don't miss deep conditioning. I don't miss sitting under the dryer. I don't miss constantly having to twist my hair or do something to it so it'll look decent the next day. I don't miss spending a whole bunch of money on products that I don't need. I don't, I don't miss anything about it. <laughs> like, Nothing at all. Nothing at all except for the physical look. Um, number seven, did you combine or split any locks during your first year? Yes, I did. I had two skinny ones in the back and two skinny ones in the front that I combined it. And here's one of them. And you can see it's a double-headed dragon now. At first, I had it twisted all the way down to the ends and then put like a piece of lock jewelry on it to secure it. And then once I felt like it was enough to where they wouldn't fall apart, I took the lock jewelry off and I actually like the look of the double-headed dragons. I think it looks really good in freeform or semi-freeform locks to have like a couple of them. So yeah, I have one in the front too, but it's probably pulled up into this ponytail. Um, splitting, no, never split. I don't think I would even recommend that. That just sounds like a lot of breakage unless you're like maybe in the first few months, but I, I wouldn't try splitting my locks ever. Number eight, do you wish you could change anything about your locks, parting or sizing? Nope, not at all. I'm very happy with the size. I wanted thick locks. I wanted a head full of thick locks, and I feel like that's what I got. As far as the parting, mm -mm, I didn't even really do a parting system. I literally just finger finger sectioned it when I started my locks and just put a lock where I felt a lock would lay right. Like, you know your hair, and you know where you need more fullness or where you could you know not have so much so I just kind of free balled it and did it like that and I think they fall really good I think they have a nice lay I was nervous in the beginning stages because again you see your hair shrink up so much and you see your hair just become totally unrecognizable to you and so I was like dang I hope I did enough because when you have thick locks it's even like I almost feel like it's an even worse or I don't want to say worse, but an even less attractive journey when you do thick locks because you can't camouflage it with just a head full of hair. Like, it's like, what's that one doing? What's that one doing? Like, they... Mm -mm. So, yeah. But now that they've matured a bit more and they've filled out a lot more and they've got some weight and drop, I absolutely love everything about them. Number nine, what do you miss about the newly locked stage? The excitement of just going from week to week, month to month, seeing new buds all over the place, knowing that you're going to have a different head of hair like all the time, like as your hair uh, matures and stuff. So yeah, that was really exciting. And it was also more exciting to watch YouTube videos in those earlier stages. Like I couldn't get enough of finding somebody who had a lock journey and then like binge watching their channel from the beginning to see what it went through to get them to where they are today. So that was a lot more exciting. I still do binge watch lock, lock journey videos on YouTube, but it was now that I kind of know what my hair is doing, even though it'll, it'll still be totally different. I still don't know what my hair is going to look like a year from now, but it was just really exciting going from loose natural hair to, you know, little buds and frizz and then finally having locks number 10 did you reach your one year lock goals I guess yeah I mean I don't really feel like physically you can have a lock goal because you unless you've had locks in your hair before you really have no clue what your hair will look like when you go on the journey so um yeah you don't know if it's going to take lock fast lock slow and then your hair doesn't actually start showing more m most of the length until your hair is fully locked like it's just going to shrink up and up and up until it locks and then it starts growing down at least it did for me so um yeah there was no like length goal or anything like that I just wanted healthy locks and for them to keep growing and keep getting thicker 
Um, if anything, I had more of like an internal goal of just to be more comfortable with my hair and my choices and just my natural beauty. And so that, yes, that was a goal that I accomplished in year one. 11, what are your lot goals for year two? It would just be the same. I mean, hopefully by year two, I'll have a lot more length than what I do now, but I'll just be happy as long as they're growing, getting thick, and that they are healthy, and that I am happy with my decision. That's all that matters to me. Number 12, what is your ultimate length goal? Probably just waist length, or even just enough to like pass my boobs. Like That would probably be plenty for me. I don't think I need locks like down to the ground to my kneecaps or anything like that but never say never because I don't I mean once I get to waist length what am I gonna do keep cutting them probably not so I will probably just let them go but I'll be like content content like ain't nobody gonna be able to tell me nothing when I get to waist length <laughs> or past boob length <laughs> um Number 13, do you have any lock crushes? Yes, I do. Um, my ultimate lock crush would be Taryn Guy. She goes by Asset now here on YouTube, and she also has Instagram. But she was my ultimate lock crush. She's who ultimately inspired me to just take that leap. She was really big in the natural hair community. I had been watching her videos since, like, my big chop days of going from relaxed to natural. I had been watching her videos and when she decided to lock her hair, not even just lock her hair, but to freeform lock her hair, she got so much backlash and a lot of people just like said some really like out of pocket things to her. And it was just like, I, I can't even believe that people would feel so um, inclined to speak negatively on somebody else's decision with their hair. Like, oh, why would you lock all that pretty hair and stuff? And it's just like, that people just don't get locks but now that she's like I think she's almost two years in the game or something like her hair is the bomb and yes I'm sure if you if you watch lock videos the way I do everybody knows who I said is she is like one of the she's she's my lock crush all day and then I have a lot of lock crushes that I follow on Instagram different women and stuff but I couldn't think to tag a million people so but yeah there's a I have a lot of lock crushes but she's number one Number 14, what has changed most about you since starting your lock journey? Um, I would just say, yes, I'm, I'm constantly growing, constantly evolving. But with this lock journey, I feel like I've become even more into myself and I'm becoming even more so the woman that I desire to be. And I just, I don't, you know, I'm so in tune with myself right now and just so, um, so happy with myself and what I got going on. Like, I just tune people's bullshit out. Like, I don't be stressed about nothing. I, <laughs> I, I don't get stressed. I don't get bothered. I used to be one of those people that cared if somebody was talking about me or felt some negative type of way about me. I had my tendencies to be petty. Like, I, but I'm just so not even on that type of shit anymore. Like, I'm just doing me, marching to the beat of my own drum. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, shit, nothing I can do about it. Like, that's just that. So, I'm just very much more so comfortable being me and in my own skin, embracing my natural beauty. Like, just, I'm, I'm very, very in tune with myself. Number 15, what was your biggest lock mistake? Probably just not embracing it and being as confident as I should have been in those earlier stages. I wish I would have just been like, you know what? My hair might look a mess today, but I, I don't feel a mess. I, I feel good. So then maybe like that would have like radiated and, you know, made me made my hair look better in my opinion. But I was just very like, Ugh, I hate my hair wearing a lot of scarves or trying to gel my edges up in the front so that my hair looks more presentable to certain people. And I wish I would have never done I, I just wish I would have been rocking the shit out of my locks at three months with, you know, no, no insecurities behind it. So that's my biggest lack of mistake. Number 16, is this a long-term or short-term short decision to have locks? And it is definitely a long-term decision. I feel like I will have locks until I am at least a senior citizen. And then who knows? I mean, I've always wanted to see what I look like with um, a fade or like a super short haircut. So one day I could possibly do that, but I do not see it anytime near my future. I've come too far to turn around. I want to see how these locks really, really take off. So no, this is not a short-term decision at all. 
mm -mm, this is it's a lifestyle so that was the end of the questions thank you guys for making it through this whole video if you did um if you have any more questions you want to ask feel free to drop them below in the comment section i am tagging everyone who is a year plus in this journey um i'm tagging all of you do i want to know i want to know so just let me know if you do it and um don't forget to subscribe hit that like button if you want more frequent updates follow me on instagram at vegan high and yes i hope y'all enjoyed i will see y'all real soon in the next one